So our next storyteller uh, was an educator of excellence himself uh, not too long ago, uh, and uh, C.J. Harris, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. So my name is C.J. Harris, and I came up here thinking, like, how can I make this exciting? How can I just spark everyone's attention and, and make this feel like an amazing moment, right? Because at the end of the day, the story is about love. We're all saying different stories, and at the end of the day, love, I feel like, is the start and finish of everything. Now, while I do say that, this story does not start off with love, though actually it kind of does, right? Because the first thing I ever truly wanted to do in life was be a dinosaur. <laughs> and I know you guys are probably like, no, he's just randomly saying this because we, we want to make a joke. And I know he's had so many good uh, people come up here, so he can't just mess up, right? But no, in all honesty, I was sure that I was going to be able to pull off logistically being a dinosaur. Like, up until fifth grade, Jurassic Park, I have to admit, did logistically seem possible. Now, I know it sounds like I'm making jokes, but if you really just break that down for a second, it wasn't too cartoony. It did actually have a scientific base. The genetics thing was possible. And I was never, ever a fan of school. And I know that's pretty crazy for me being an educator of excellence, um, but I was never a fan. Homework, not my jam. I did not enjoy studying or reading initially. Um, and I was sure that I could either create video games or just trade my body off to science and they would let me be a dinosaur. <laughs> not just any dinosaur. I mean, <laughs> a dinosaur, the tallest, with the longest neck, and I would just eat the top of the leaves and I would not be worried about any of this drama that life has to offer. Uh, also, now as an adult, I'm not necessarily against it because bills are not very comfortable. And I would love to get those out of life as well. But I wanted to be a dinosaur. And that was the, the initial life goal, right? I also, after realizing that science wasn't going to knock on my door and say, hey, give me your body to become that dinosaur that I had to have a more logistical process because I was a very, very wise young man. Like I was like, hey, I love this idea, but it might not be the one, right? So I also said, what could I do that wouldn't require too much other effort? And I was like, let me be a firefighter. I was watching the shows on TV and I liked it. I liked what that looked like, right? So I was like, let me be a firefighter. Then I went on a field trip where I had an opportunity to wear that firefighter uniform. Promptly decided that I was not gonna be a firefighter. That's one of the hottest environments possible, and there's no air conditioning in there. They make it look a lot better than it actually is, and I want no parts in that kind of temperature. So, we're standing here today because I did not become a dinosaur. I did not become a firefighter. I actually ended up a teacher, right? Now, CJ, how did you become a teacher? Well, this story is about love. So, when I was, was young, probably coming in about second grade, um, I was actually born in Germany. So, when I got here, first grade, <laughs> second grade, um, I didn't really understand Memphis like that. This is a very flavorful place, and it requires <laughs> confidence, and you cannot be timid at all. Resoluteness is the the automatic base of how you're going to survive in Memphis. So coming into Memphis, I remember in first grade, coming into second grade, being like, "Hey guys, uh, let's play, let's play football, holding my soccer ball." And if anybody knows what checking is, it was a rough time. But resolute, not timid. So I did persevere. So don't feel sorry. And it just added flavor to who I am, right? So um, also, 
When I got here in second grade, I made the first catalyst of what was going to make me who you see today. I met another one. Well, actually, in second grade, I met the catalyst that was going to make me who you see today. Her name, their name, was Miss Breeden and Miss Boyle, my second grade and fourth grade teacher. I owe every accolade, every positive that I can have in the educational field to them. And, like this story is about, their love. So, this is how it goes. In second and fourth grade, they were best friends. They were two peas in a pod, right? And I was this new kid from Germany who had just been checked about their soccer ball. I was not built for this environment yet, and I was still getting my wings. But Miss Northam, my teacher, she was like, I see something in you. I'm going to plant a seed, and I'm going to water it every day. Now that seed, when it was getting watered, it didn't seem like anything was going to sprout, for sure. But what did happen is that those two best friends, they would pour into me so much. I remember having class jobs, and I wouldn't be doing anything except wiping off the board. But they're like, oh my gosh, look at that board. It is too clean. And then her best friend would be like, you know what? When he gets to fourth grade, guess what? This board is going to be my board. You'll never have a board like that again. And she would be like, well, I'm just going to move up to fourth grade too, and I'll keep them forever, and you'll never have them. And I would listen to them having these conversations with each other, and all it ever did was give me confidence. And it made me feel like, yeah, well, I'm a pretty good board cleaner. I've trained my whole life this. So, you know, like, where am I going to go wrong, right? Because I know exactly how to use a little Windex and buff that thing on up. So I watched those moments add up and add up and add up and add up. Literally, I remember one time I had got, so AR, for those of you who may not know, Accelerated Reader. I remember the first time it was like a huge goal. I remember trying to get 100 AR points, and if you get them, you become a, you get a little star plaque in your name, right? There were so many kids who had already got it, but I remember thinking like, I can't read all these books. What am I gonna do? But I was given Harry Potter, and that thing is like 40 points. So if you can handle it, you really push yourself to like the echelon of point getters. And so I had about 60, and I was working my way through Harry Potter the whole year, and I knocked it out. And I, I scored uh, whatever I needed to. I don't even remember at this point, but I scored whatever I needed to, and I got that 100 points. And I remember when I got that 100 points, she stopped the class, lined everyone up, because her best friend was in fourth grade, walked us all across the building to fourth grade, knocked on our door and said, look at my superstar that you don't have. Ha, ha, ha. Just like that. And then Miss Breed and her, all of her respectable dramaticism was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Give him to me right now. You don't need him. I need him. And I remember thinking, these ladies would do anything for me. So why don't I do anything for them. And, like I was saying, the story's about love. And that feeling was that, right? So my entire second grade was a whirlwind. Great love story, right? But every love story does have that trial and tribulation. So I had to go to third grade, and I left it. I remember not having to walk past that second grade hall to the third grade hall, and I was like, it's so cold down here. This place isn't where I used to be. Like, look at this, the floors are red. I'm used to green. Like, what is this place? Judging it harshly. And, sad to say, you would think that this is a joke, but that third grade hall never really showed me or gave me that same feeling. I had another teacher, shout out my name, much like Harry Potter, who should, who should not be named, right? Um, and my mom, having already fell in love with Ms. Northam and all of her experiences, um, when she did that same interview, you know, because moms are going to find out who your teacher is. Uh, so when she did that same mom interview, that teacher was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. I was trying to work at Target. It didn't work out. You know, this isn't something I'm going to do forever, but you know, I'm here now, and I really want to see him succeed. But you could tell, love wasn't there. 
And so, as somebody who had just had a plethora of that, it was really easy for me to veer off course. That was one of the most challenging years in education. And uh, I work, I have my master's and I'm finishing up my doctorate. And I can honestly say that third grade year where I didn't feel love was much more difficult than this dissertation I'm trying to do, right? Um, and that's where I'll end third grade because I don't even want to think about it. But that fourth grade year, right, you guys remember I said that that seed got planted in second grade, right? You remember I said that seed got planted in second grade, right? Ah, uh, see, that's that teacher mode right there. Waiting for 100%. I was tracking. Boom, boom, boom. I, I was making sure it happened. So, uh, yeah. Second grade, <laughs> third grade, right? Now, we're in fourth grade, so that seed got planted. And then, that sun that that seed got planted in, that tropical climate, right? That sun was a little too hot in third grade, and it started drying that seed out. You know, I was still had that maybe I'll be a dinosaur thing in me. It just, I didn't, wasn't sure teaching was me, right? Then, in fourth grade, here comes Miss Breeding with the world's biggest uh, watering pail, ready to put me back on track. And not only did she do that, but that first 100 point star that I had, I got all the way up to a planet. That's 400 points. And I took down multiple Harry Potters that year, and I was probably the most dominant force in the entire city of Memphis. You could not tell me anything. So much so, and those two ladies that I had grown to love so much, they used to always have their little old lady hangout thing where they would go on, I want to say Wednesday night, and play bingo. I had my mom bring me too, because I was hanging out with the crew. Like, I'm like, let's, let's roll those dice, be nine, let's get it, all right? And it was a vibe, it was a whole vibe. And I enjoyed those moments much more than you know, some of the, the greater moments I have now. Because uh, every time I look back on that, I still feel what we're saying this story is about. Love. What we're saying this story is about? Love. Goodness gracious, I just still got it done. <laughs> Come on. But uh, yeah, so second, third, fourth. And I say all of that to say because now I am. Uh, Dean of Students at Promise Academy Spring Hill. So, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it's, it's most certainly an intense mission. Now I'm in charge of all of those scholars. And now I'm in charge of giving each of them that individual, individual feeling of what this story is about, which is love. Exactly. And as my second year in the craft, I got to say, you know, I might just be a love doctor. Like, I, I very much love what I do. And though, I say this humbly, I don't think anymore, even though that there's bills existing and I have to be an adult, I don't think I trade my body off to be a dinosaur. But, you know, when these taxes keep going up, eh, I'll be wavering a little bit. I'll be like, look, if I can make a call and trade it off, I might. But no, in all honesty, I just wanted to let you guys know that this was a story about love. And that's why everyone is in here today, because as an educator of excellence, and as anyone who is an educator, and that's all of us, because being an educator is not being in the classroom. Being an educator is being somebody who is dedicated to the art of transferring knowledge in whatever way it may look to someone who's in need, right? So as educators, educator of excellence, as educators, right, I want everyone to know that you also have a story about love. So, you know, next time the spill it comes up, you can get the mic too, but today was my night. Thank you, CJ.